All right, so this video focuses on pharmacology. I've made it with the mindset that second year MBBS has just started for you students. You have your books and resources, but you don't really know how to study the subject. Now I am here for you. <laughs> I am Aisri Bhatt, right now a third year MBBS student. And before we begin a disclaimer, I don't believe that there's just one single right way when it comes to studying any subject, but if I was given this advice at the beginning of my second year, it really would have helped me. It's going to be a short video and I'm going to divide it into three sections. The first section focuses on the right kind of strategy in my opinion, and you can take a few points and you don't have to follow everything, mind you. The second part of the video focuses on what sort of mistakes I believe I made and how I could have prevented them. And the third part of the video focuses on some specific points, like if I was to talk about antimicrobials, how to go about it. But right now, let's talk about the ideal way of studying pharmacology, in my opinion. Okay, so when you talk about pharmacology in general, you will be able to understand that you can relate it to physiology. So from the beginning, have this sort of habit that before beginning it from pharmacology, from your textbooks, first go and relate it to your first year physiology. So you can use your first year MBBS textbooks for that. You can use Gaitan, Hindu Quran or whatever you are using. Even if you made notes, right? When you get that basic understanding of physiology, this makes the next steps for pharmacology easier because then the mechanism of actions will become easier because you know that in our body, this is how it's working. So if from an exogenous source I'm, being, I'm giving a drug, this is how it would relate to the body because of the physiology. All right, so after this first step of doing a bit of physiology, let's move on to the next step, which is to memorize the drug classifications. Now, before you go into learning about the mechanism of actions, the side effects, the contraindications, the uses of the drug, make it a point to remember the different kinds of drugs available. The most important thing in pharmacology is remembering the drug name. Even when you go to postings and you look into the treatment, no one is mentioning the mechanism of action there. You just need to know ki is disease ke liye we are using this drug. Even if you can't remember at one point all of the drug names, at least try to find a pattern. And it does take time for that. You need to be patient. I didn't do this. I first immediately went into trying to understand mechanism of actions. I felt if I remember the action, then it'll be easy to remember the drug. But that doesn't happen because if there are 10 mechanism of action, you, your brain will get confused. Which one is for which? So to avoid that confusion, first make a point to remember at least some of the drug names and at least the headings of the classification. Only when your brain is able to identify ki ye sub drugs is topic mein hai, only then should you start going to the next step in trying to understand the drug. Even if it takes a whole three hour session, it's okay. Because at least now in the exam, if they ask about a classification, you will be able to give the table. What is the basic minimum expectation from you in pharmacology? You have accomplished it in the first step. And also it's like, you get a sort of confidence that you have been able to memorize and remember some of the drugs and it'll become easier later on when you revise because you'll be like, I've done this one day ago, first itself I remembered. So it becomes easier. The next thing which I rec recommend you to do is start watching a video for the same because KDT is very scattered. A lot of the things are repeated and you don't know where your focus has to be. So if you have a reference video, I use Maru. People use GRG. There are different videos out there. And just listen to it. You don't have to make notes at this point. And also because of the video, you know which drugs need more focus, which are the first line drugs, which drugs have something unique about them. So you get an overview of all this. So first watch a video and then move on to the textbook. Now when it comes to textbooks, you can refer Katzen, you can refer KDT. There's no problem into which one you're referring. Have a practice to learn from diagrams. Diagrams help you in that in giving you that extra edge in exams as well. Saves your time and also just gives you a really good understanding. At the end, you need to remember contraindications, side effects, uses and which are the first line drugs and also the mechanism of action. Now, mechanism of action, you can study it very well from Katzen. But in KDT, they've given side headings for side effects for uses, for contraindications. 
so that makes it very easy and helpful for you at the end of catsung every chapter they have these tables summary tables so this will act as your revision uh, another thing is like kdt they've also given headings about treatment and management this is very important for your exams because they ask you how will you manage a case of op poisoning how will you manage a case of thyrotoxicosis so all of these is given very well in kdt so when i talk about notes i maintain them from the beginning but then i never referred my notes again and i never revised from my notebooks so it didn't really help me in that way and slowly i stopped taking notes when i was watching a video i would give my whole attention to the video instead of stopping again and again and again to just make points which i would never refer again uh whichever points which i knew were very important i would note them in my textbook itself or in post it notes but during my revision when i realized that managements are important treatments are important and also like there are some very very unique points about drugs i maintained a separate notebook for that so these are just some pages of that notebook i would write down the steps the dosage the routes which you would have to follow and again this is covered in your kdt but because i had a separate notebook for that i got confidence and during my exam in 10 minutes i could go through the whole management because it's all in one 50 page notebook uh, in the same way make the sort of big tables wherein from the kdt small that small book wherein you have all the classifications write down the different drugs and write down the classification but in a big format and beneath each drug you can write down the main points which you need to remember by doing this you are reinforcing your brain and you are using all of your senses moving on to some of the problems which i faced see i struggled with remembering the drug names and the main reason why this happened is because i lost patience i was like if i remember the mechanism of action i easily easy easily remember the drug but there was no correlation my confidence kind of dipped and i used to experience these sort of brain fogs like even in the middle of the exam i wouldn't know what to write because i could not recall the drug and without recalling the drug writing the mechanism of action makes no sense so try to do it step wise and give your time it does take time to remember drugs but that is what pharmacology is about so that is one thing also as i mentioned kdt is very scattered and it's very repetitive so at the beginning i didn't really know how to go about it but once i moved on to catsung i was like okay i can relate better and i'm able to find more interest in the subject even though i find it difficult another thing is i didn't revise multiple times i was like okay i now understand the physio i now understand the mechanism of action all i don't know is the drug name this will come to me later on it never came because this is all memory based and the more number of times you repeatedly do it that is how many times it will help you but because i didn't do that i was never able to recall drugs so revise multiple times and it does take time to remember a particular whole classification but unless you do it many times it will not come to you so yes and the main thing which i did was i compared myself with many many people because a lot of people can recall stuff very easily and they can remember drugs at the tip of their tongues even if we've revised it the same number of times so that kind of made me feel a bit inferior but you don't have to do this you have a whole year and it's a whole learning process so don't feel inferior and don't feel like you will never be able to be good in the subject okay okay now some specific topics which i would like to mention general pharmacology give your time in understanding this entire concept and it will take a lot of time but it's okay this will help you throughout pharmacology um whatever it is in kdt go through all the diagrams go through the graphs this will help you in exams as well in the practicals as well and also in building your understanding moving on to antimicrobials i preferred kdt itself for this it's like Maro the videos were amazing for antimicrobials i got to know this pretty late after my prelim exams in the last month i watched all the videos for antimicrobials it's given very well and even the notes are amazing they've given a lot of flow charts so this really helps you because in antimicrobials it's very confusing and there are many many units it becomes very difficult for you as an individual to go through it all so having maro or having some sort of video backup is very helpful and when it comes to the textbook in kdt the tables are very good and regimens you look at it once you don't really understand it but when you say it out loud 
you are able to understand the pattern so you can go for kdt for antimicrobial and one more thing about pharmacology uh some of the topics you will be studying in pathology as well so first do it from patho then move on to pharmac so for example when you're going to be studying about diabetes first study it from pathology and then move on to pharmac by doing this you'll be able to get a really good correlation and you'll understand it in a very good way so it will help you in medicine as well when you come to third and final year so this is all about pharmacology i hope that you've understood whatever i've tried to mention and again this is not the only right method and you might find some loopholes in what i've mentioned it's okay you can take some points and then use trial and error on your own but if i would start pharmacology again and if i was in second year this is what i would follow so yes that's all i have for this week come back next week for more time out with icy bye